Welcome back, Helene. Thank you, Sam. Yes. Uh, how was the transition from uh, uh, studies into the world of work? Yes. So um, after I've done my health and beauty diploma, um, I was working in the the health and beauty environment. But um, I soon realized that um, I'm really getting bored and it's really not what I really want to do. So um, I've done a sales and marketing diploma and I've done it at Damelin while working. Mm. Damelin so was... was uh, Damelin and Unisa were the darlings of South Africa when it comes to distance education and part-time education, isn't it? It was, yes. And the great thing about Damelin, um, you know, the, the course was not just um, paperwork, you know, it was very applicable um, with regards to um, practical work. And um, I, would, I remember uh, one of the projects we actually had to do, Kaya FM actually just started. Mm. Um, that time and one of our projects was to do the whole sales and marketing research and suggestions of promoting the whole radio station so mm. th- yeah that was great um, being very practical um, and and not just um, paperwork as such I want to share with you a very interesting saying in, in, in that we used to do and a, a marketing uh, a slogan of Damelin. Obviously, I'm going to reveal my 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 age <laughs> in, 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 the, in, the, in the African link, uh, environment. We used to talk about Monghadi Brahma. Basically, yeah. the Brahmas are the guys who started Damelin, and they okay. used to advertise. Monghadi means the minister. And then okay. when they were promoting Damelin, they said, Mohari Brahma. <laughs> I think they were the brothers that started Damelin. And okay. uh, it was very well, well positioned. And everybody will, and I still remember their study guys, they were yellowish and the brown, brownish low color designs. And, and you know, when you've gone to register and you come back carrying those study guides, yeah, man. It's like you just want to swallow those study guys like they are. Uh, uh, and the same thing with UNISA. If you go to UNISA, when you come back with this pack of study guides, you feel like, yeah, now I'm a student. You know? <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah, so that was great that you decided to augment your, 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 your beauty diploma with something more to do with marketing, I guess they are related because about image, isn't it? Yes, yes, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, and that was really the start of, of um, my career. Yes. And, um, and I really realized that um, it's actually something that I do enjoy. Mm. Um, mm. And there's always a challenge. And I think that was the big thing that was, drawing me towards the sales and marketing side. And who, who were you working for then after finishing your marketing, or when you did your marketing uh, studies? When I finished my marketing study, I actually got a position at um, Imperial Truck Rental. Wow. And, um, yeah, so um, that was a great experience I got from them. Lots of training and um, another thing I enjoyed the truck rental industry and that is when I actually realized that um, I actually have a passion for trucks. <laughs> you get lovely trucks. You know, lots of people go crazy when they see a nice Maserati or but if we had to go to the big shows and these fancy trucks I could never imagine <laughs> that a truck can be so fancy <laughs> with a bed and everything in there. I just love that. So yeah. um, that was the great thing of the industry. So you, so you will sit there, receive calls, and the clients say, I, I'm, I'm looking for a truck to rent. And what sort of question will you ask them to determine the right type of a truck to rent out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's um, 
mostly ask the product that they um, need to transport, the rate, um, where they need to transport it, um, if it was dangerous goods that they need to transport, because obviously there was special paperwork and a special truck that needed to, um, as well as the driver with, with um, the knowledge of how to deal with dangerous goods. So all those things were um, necessary when you have to deal with a client. And then, you know, being in the truck rental transport industry, there's always this challenge of trucks breaking down. And um, I remember at Imperial Truck Rental and at the branch that I was working, our biggest clients were actually in the movie industry. Wow. And, um, yes, and I was actually working there when they were shooting out of Africa. And um, we had to supply the trucks and the batteries and vehicles for them. And um, But it's very hard when you deal with the movie industry because, you know, sometimes they work with them. Um, big budgets, lots of people, and they can't lose a minute, you know, because mm. for every minute they have to pay a thousand people for that minute. So mm. if your truck breaks down and there's props and everything in that truck, it used to be quite a challenge to get that sorted out. But that, that was the excitement that went with it, and I enjoyed that. And then and, and what sort of working hours were you then uh, subjected to? Um, we used to, when I was at Imperial Truck Rental, I was obviously self-representative, but um, we used to make turns between the branch manager and the um, self-representative. So the one morning you'll come in early and you'll dispatch the drivers and make sure they go out, and then you'll leave like four o'clock. And then the branch manager will make sure everything is right for the evening and the next morning. So um, whatever you do late afternoon, you there to sort out in the morning. So I wasn't just involved in um, sales as such, but in the operational side of it. And I think it's so important. Um, and I must say that's one thing why Imperial Truck Rental did so well those years because um, there was a great understanding between operations, sales, as well as the accounting side of it. Mm. And I think if companies can get um, those different divisions to understand each other's way of working and what they actually need to fulfill their function um, mm. and obviously it comes back to good communication mm. then um, the company would really excel if, if they can get that communication correct mm. I would have thought that the truck rental uh, uh, business will be dominated by men <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, I think there's lots of men in the transport industry, but, you know, in the truck rental side, you will be surprised how many um, women is involved. And sometimes I think, um, and that's now I'm, I'm, I'm talking out of a women perspective, um, I just think sometimes women are a lot more um Detailed orientated. Yes, absolutely. Um, and a high touch, they give a high touch yes. service, you know. Yes, mm. yes. And um, I think at that stage, what what made it so great was um, I also think, and that was strange, um, if, if you think of cultures, because um, sometimes, you know, you, you as a, a, a young lady, needs to dispatch drivers and work with them um, and they sort of have to like follow instructions from you but um, I sometimes think they were more open maybe because the women were just more um, softer in their communication mm -hmm. um, than mm -hmm. men would have been um, so um, and that was great working I mean after I remember I always had such great relationships 
with the drivers because you know you have to you have to have a good relationship with them because um, they are representing you when they take that truck to the clients. You know, so mm. you can work as hard as you can to get the deal, but if the rest of the company is not taking care of um, of the rest of the um, service to the client, then um, you can lose your deal, and that that cuts on your salary. Mm. And uh, uh, were the most of the drivers uh, black drivers, or is that a mix with white drivers? Yes. No, no, most of them were black drivers then. Mm. And, and what language would then communicate with them? Mostly English. Mm. Um, there were quite a few that were actually Afrikaans. Yes. And, um, but generally speaking, um, the language uh, was, was English. Mm. Mm. Wow, that sounds fascinating. I'm sure ladies out there listening who may not be aware that uh, it's not only small vehicles, rentals that could be exciting. A truck can be very exciting. When they release a new truck and they bring it in and you, you hear those sounds, I'm like you, I love trucks. But for me, I love them from the point of view that I studied, uh, I majored in transport economics at my... In my, in my oh. At the visa for my BCom, so 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 the the role trucks play in the economy is is, is is quite very much often underestimated and understood. But then the the you talk about the capacity of a vehicle, the 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 appropriateness of a vehicle for a particular cargo, the. You know, all those fascinating stuff and rolling, we talk about rolling stock, we're talking about uh, palletization and we're talking about containerization before even we're going to talk about the actual truck itself. So absolutely those who, women that study transport economics, that will study logistics and shipping, I'm sure they will, they will be happy to know that there's a huge market out there. And of course, marketing and sales. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes, for absolutely. you, it was by, by coincidence that you studied marketing and then you get to get the opportunity. And I guess, tell us a little bit about how did you go about product knowledge, being the truck itself and the cargo and all those things? Were you running in-house courses or how did you develop yourself? Yeah, you know, from the start, it was in-house courses. So um, they trained you, you actually um, go inside the truck, you see what's happening, how it's looking, the different trucks. So most of the training that I had with regards to the knowledge around the truck um, was, was, was in, our, yeah, in mm. our training. And then um, between, um, in, in a long career in the transport industry, um, I've worked for Imperial Truck Rental, I've worked for Super Rent Truck Rental, and then Contract Truck Hire. Yeah, that's exactly, and, I wanted you to, to, to also tell us, was it the end at uh, Imperial, or did you proceed? Yeah, carry on. Yeah, so I proceeded after Imperial, um, I went to, to Super Rent, um, at Super Rent, we were only involved in the sales and marketing, so we weren't involved in in, in the um, operational side of it. And therefore, I'm very grateful that I started off at Imperial, where I got that background of um, the operational side of the business. So, um, yeah, and um, between... Actually, between um, super rent and contract truck hire, um, I was um, involved at Peugeot Commercial Vehicles. So I went a bit into the selling of vehicles. And mm. um, there I got more knowledge on the actual working of a vehicle, of an engine, um, that kind of thing that just gave me extra knowledge um, with with regards to the bigger vehicle industry. Mm, mm, beautiful. And uh, uh, so when did you decide that it was enough working for corporates and you wanted to start something of your own? Uh, Sam, maybe sometimes you 
know, when you get older <laughs> <laughs> and you think to yourself, I think it's when my children, after I have my, had my last born, um, you know, I really realised that um, I wanted to do something so that, um, of course, the, the eldest son was um, start going to school school almost, my daughter was already in school and I had little time with her in primary school to spend with sports in the afternoon and to support her. So um, I think after my yeah, after my last born, um, I've made a decision that um, I want to start doing my own thing. Mm, mm. And, and you, you, you are fortunate that you started career so early by, by the way it sounds, that you could, you could actually enjoy it, but uh, and now their children sound like they're still young, so you, you still have a good time to see them through quite a number of stages of their development. That, that's true, and um, uh, I was privileged at least when my daughter was at high school, um, I could spend a lot of time with her projects and her sports. Um, she was get very good at her sporting career, so or at school with with sports. So I had that opportunity, and um, yeah. So on the entrepreneurial side, um, it was tough in the beginning. It was very tough. I was busy with different things, and I started off sort of more working um, for other people, but like on a um, commission-based. Yes. Um, and and what, what type of uh, work was that that you started with, with other entrepreneurs? When I started just doing my own thing, I started off a bit trying to do a few things in the transport industry because that was what I knew. I tried to establish um, a service where um, I have the context of um, vehicle repairs, um, also renting of vehicles, the whole um, idea of giving a one solution to the client. Um, it didn't work out that well, and then I actually got involved, or a friend asked me, she had her own um, printing company and doing um, diaries and calendars, um, promotional items, and she invited me if I didn't want to come and work with it. So, um, yeah, so that was totally a new field for me. A new, a new struggle, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure some of your friends might have said, hey, man, you must be very crazy. How do you leave corporate <laughs> to come and struggle like this? <laughs> oh, you know, Sam, um, at a moment or at a stage in my life, I thought to myself, you know, my sister, and she is still an accountant today, and, um, you know, it's like she's done her studies and she's been doing what she's been doing her whole life and everything seems just so in order. And what yeah, I am visited at this and visited at that, um, you know, every once in a while a new challenge. Mm. Now that I at least know my genetic brain profile, which we'll talk about a little bit later, yes. I can understand why <laughs> I was doing all these different things. Wow, um, you know, that's beautiful. You know, Let's hold it there because I'm, I can't wait to go into this uh, 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 brain profiling work that you are doing now. And, and I must say, your, 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 your story is fascinating. It looks like when it's time for you to jump, you don't care whether it's related to the previous assignment or not. As long as it appeals, you just jump. So that, that's quite interesting. Uh, you are starting, you, you are going to answer for us why are you this type of a person that doesn't change, just who just change when they want to change, and and also explain to us this prophylogist, prophylogist as you call it, <laughs> what does it, what is it? So when we come back, we're going to. I would like you to spend time on on that, and then hopefully uh, we will also get to talk about the. Uh, the type of enterprise that you will want to establish. I guess the prophylogist 
or the brain profiling is just a service and product you are offering. But I, by, by look of things and, and feeling your, the energy in you, I can see you are establishing an enterprise, right? Yes, that's absolutely true. Good. We'll be back. Great.